Good morning, my name is Maria Yambrik and I will introduce you Amanida, an air package for overall results meta-analysis. Let's start with a brief introduction. So meta-analysis is the statistical combination in a single estimate for results from studies answering the same question. This is used in medical research and before a clinical application we will need a lot of academic findings to be able to do the meta-analysis. These academic findings from, can, come from different files, for example, genomics, among others. And there is one that is now emerging as a clinical tool, which is the metabolomics. Metabolomics is the study of endogenous and exogenous metabolites in biological system. The aim of this omics is provide information about all the metabolites that are in a system. These metabolites are a small chemical compounds. For this, the diversity is really huge. For example, in the human organism, we have uh, identified until now more than 200,000 metabolites, but this number is increasing day by day. Which is the common word for, for metabolomics? This starts with a sample, can be a fluid, can be a cell. And then it, this is analyzed through high throughput technologies like mass spectrometry or nuclear magnetic resonance. And we obtain a lot of results. From one sample, we can obtain more than 100 uh, compounds identified and a lot more that we cannot be able to identify. What we do with this list of compounds from each sample? We do some statistics. This is the statistics more common use. So first, what we do is compare. We compare two groups. We will have the control group versus the disease group. For example, cancer. In this case, the first thing is to know the statistical significance. We, we want to know if one group is different or not from the other. Once we have this statistical significance, we will know the biological significance, so how many change there is between the two groups. This is known as the full change, and what we have is the ratio between the population and the control. These are the statisticals that are used, used in metabolomics. So when we have, uh, we want to do a meta-analysis with the metabolomic results, we find some problems. In the case of the traditional meta-analysis, we will need some metrics to be able to perform this. For the standard effect signs, we will need the mean that we can find on the metabol and the metabolic studies, but we will need the standard deviation or standard error, but this is not disclosed in the metabolic studies. We don't have a standard initiative for statistical reporting of the data, and this is why we don't cannot find these estimates on the articles. And the number of participants that this is disclosed in the studies. The other way is to perform the meta-analysis with real data. The amount of data from meta meta metabolomics studies is really huge, and this was really cost, so it's not an option really common to perform. For this, we have developed the Amanida meta-analysis approach. This um, meta-analysis combines only two metrics, the p-value and the full change. So first, the p-value is combined using the weight uh, Fisher's method weighted by the sample size. So it's not the same that we have a p-value obtained with, in a big study of more than 200 participants than a p-value obtained from a small uh, study of, for example, 20 participants. When we have this, we combine also the full change 
which is logarithmically averaged and is also weighted by the sample size. This rationale is implemented in a grand package called Amanida. With this package, you can uh, use simple, uh, simple text files and do the meta-analysis approach. We have also included another type of meta-analysis more qualitative that I will explain deeper later, that is the boot counting. Then we have this graphical visualizations of the results and also of the data. Here is the type of data that Amanida needs to work. So we will need the ID of each combo. And that can be the common name, can be a number, whatever it, the user wants. Then obviously the p-value, the full change, and the sample size. So with only these four columns, we can perform the meta-analysis. Then we obtain the results, which is a table with the combined p-value and the combined voltage. If we are talking about metabolites, Amanida also allows to complement the information about these chemical compounds. So you will have the molecular formula, molecular weight, and also the ID from public metabolomic databases. Here we have the visualization of the results for Amanida. In this case, it's a volcano plot, like we have in genomics. So the full change logarithmically transformed is plotted versus the logarithmically transformed p-value. And we have labeled the components that are significant either for upregulation or the regulation. Then we move to the qualitative part. So there are some cases that the full change is not numerically disclosed. So we only have re reported if the compound is upregulated or downregulated. So in these cases, what we do is about counting. We just saying about to each compound depending on the trend. If the compound is upregulated, we will uh, assign a plus one. If the compound is downregulated, then it's assigned a minus one. And the sum of the words will be the total result. In this case, for example, citric acid, which is reported in six articles, which analyze uh, urinary uh, urine for colorectal cancer, the total sum of the votes is minus two. Then as before, you can complement all the information from the public databases and visualize the results. At right, we have the components that are upregulated, at a down and left, we see the components that are downregulated. So, what happens with these compounds that are not robust between the studies? It happens usually in metabolomics that one compound is reported upregulated in one study and downregulated in other studies. So we develop the explorer plot to see at first glance which compounds are these that are reported in both sides. For example, as before, citric acid is reported we, remember, we say that it was reported in six articles. And here we say that there are two articles that say that it was upregulated, and three articles that say that it was unregulated, and one article that say that have no change between controls and patients. All these have also been implemented in a shiny app for, to be more user-friendly. And in this case, it works similarly as the grant package. So you can upload your data. You choose if you want the quantitative or the qualitative analysis, and then select the columns that you want to use. We have to remember that if we have missing data, it will not be taken in account for the analysis. Once we have select our data, we calculate them, we show, 
here, the, the rows that are not taken in account. And then we have the results. Here we have the volcano plot, where the user can choose the cutoff for the p-value, statistically significant, and the cutoff for the full change, the biological the variance. And only with a click, you will know the component that is significant for upregulation and downregulation. The same of the packets, you can see the complete table of the results of the Amanida meta-analysis approach. We include also the vote counting and the explorer plot to see differences at first glance. At last, all the results can be downloaded directly in a HTML file where you have all the tables obtained with the meta analysis using the Manida approach and also the bot counting, including all the graphs that can be done with the Amanida error package. So this is all. I want to thank my supervisors and the people that helped me. And thanks to you for hearing me. If anyone has any question, I will be glad to answer it.